So who would have thought that so much could be riding on this one little movie, Aquaman? Uh, really, the fate of the DCEU rests in the hands of Aquaman. So, is it good? Aquaman stars Jason Momoa, Nicole Kidman, Patrick Wilson, and is directed by James Wan. What's up, guys? Another DCEU movie is upon us. Uh, full disclosure, first off, this is a guy that freaking loves Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. I have both of them up there just to shout it at the mountaintops, I guess. Um, I guess I'm one of the few. I don't want to say one of the few, but I know, I know those movies have their fans. I just like the style of the DCEU when they were starting out compared to what Marvel was doing. You know, strategically, I think it was smart. You have the DCEU, which is a, a let's just face it, it's a darker universe. And then you have Marvel, which is fun and happy. There's some dark stuff in there, but really Marvel is a crowd pleaser. That's what they are. A lot of people prefer Marvel. You know, you might prefer Marvel and that's great. But when this thing started out, I was full on DC. I just loved the tone of Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. Uh, Batman v Superman did have a couple problems, but overall, I still love that movie to death, especially the ultimate cut. Uh, I've, I've been planning on reviewing the actual ultimate cut because I never got a chance to do that. But from this point on, though, because of the, the financial, I don't want to say failure, but it was almost a failure for Batman v Superman, and really the reviews were so bad that... DC decided to change course and who could blame them? They wanted to switch gears and go a little bit more towards the Marvel formula. That's what I think they were doing actually. Um, and if you look, like Wonder Woman, it's a little bit lighter in tone. And so when I saw the trailer for Aquaman, I thought, this is gonna suck. That, that's what I thought from the trailer because really the trailer boasts a lot of that comedy. And there is some comedy in this movie, but fortunately, Aquaman, is probably the best DC movie since, in my opinion, Batman v Superman. I know Wonder Woman has its lovers out there, but I think that freaking villain, which I don't even remember the name of it anymore from Wonder Woman, was a completely throwaway villain, and the movie was given way too much credit when it had the one of the shittiest villains in the, the, you know, the whole expanded universe. Gal Gadot is phenomenal as Wonder Woman. So, but we're here to talk about Aquaman. That's what we're going to talk about. I'm going to tell you why I think this movie is... I think it's the saving grace of DC. I really do. I think it's going to be not a massive hit, but I think it's, you know, it's going to, it's a step in the right direction is what it is. But before I get into this, there is a 10 year old child out there by the name of Reese Carter. Uh, one of his family members reached out to me and said, uh, you know, Reese, he loves your videos. He watches them all the time and his birthday is coming up. It's uh, I believe January 3rd and uh, you know, it would be such a cool thing if you could wish him a happy birthday. And, uh, you know, he doesn't even know it. So, Reese, there you go. Happy birthday to you. I hope you have a, a great day. And uh, thank you so much for watching my channel. I really appreciate that. Have a great one, buddy. But anyway, quick plot synopsis. This is the story of Aquaman. Um, I like that this is more of an origin story. There's different ways that you can tell an origin story. I think this one does it the best way because it bounces around. We don't go in chronological order. There are moments where we see Arthur when he's young in the first half of the movie, but it bounces around. Uh, really the opening is on this sub submarine that's being hijacked and Aquaman comes in to save the day. And this is where we're introduced to the character of Manta. And this is an interesting scene, actually, because Aquaman's pretty much just going to let them die. That is a loose thread that hangs in the balance throughout the rest of the movie. You're always wondering, well, what's going to happen with this Manta character? But I really liked this segment of the movie. As far as, like, an action, hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, portion, this was actually one of the best scenes. As far as hand-to-hand -hand combat, I'm not saying it's one of the best scenes action-wise. We will get to that. But, you know, they started off on the right foot. Because I like this Manta character. I think he's interesting. You know, I think he's relatable. I think that's when villains are the best, is when they're relatable, when they feel like you could reach out and touch them. That's one of the biggest problems I had with Justice League. What they did with Steppenwolf, he looked like a computer-generated creature. And there is some of that in this, for sure. But I think they do it right. But really, this is the story. It's, it's a family struggle. You know, at the beginning of the movie, Arthur's parents, they have to separate. And so 
Arthur is pretty much raised by his father. And so eventually there is this war that's going on between Atlantis uh, and the Earth. You know, I guess, I guess the, the land and the sea. And so Arthur eventually has to take the, the rightful place as king. And, you know, this is a story we've seen uh, quite a few times before. You know, the, the reluctant hero that doesn't think he's ready to be king, like Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. And so really this is his journey discovering himself, eventually finding out if he is worthy to be king. Now, first off, to start off with the pros, Jason Momoa is Aquaman. I think he was good in Justice League, but in this, he makes this movie his own. He gives such a commanding performance. Uh, and by the end of this movie, I promise you, you will not see anybody else as Aquaman except Jason Momoa. Uh, I love when an actor just digs so deep into a role that is passionate about a role. I think it comes across on the screen, and you can tell that Jason Momoa is so passionate about this role. He loves it and I wouldn't want anybody else to have it. But also, from a character standpoint, there are some heavy hitters in this movie, like Nicole Kidman, like Willem Dafoe, Patrick Wilson. This reminded me of what they did with like Batman Begins, you know, how you had all those heavy hitters that were in that movie. This one does the same thing. Patrick Wilson is Arthur's half-brother. You know, there's this struggle between him and Arthur because he has been uh, commanding Atlantis for this whole time. And so then he hears about Arthur, who is the rightful king, and he's going to have a problem with that. And I can understand that. That's a relatable villain. You know, this is a guy that's really taking up the mantle the whole time. He is making sure that uh, Atlantis is running smoothly. I get why he would have problems with Arthur coming down. He's not like a full-on evil guy. He has his territory, Atlantis, in his best interest, much like Zod did in Man of Steel. And also you got uh, Mera, played by Amber Heard, I thought she was perfect in this role. I thought she was one of the shining lights of Aquaman. And, uh, you know, their chemistry is pretty strong together because much of this movie is just them two together. You know, there's this whole segment where they're in this, like, desert terrain after there was this huge big battle in Atlantis. And uh, so, you know, then I guess diving a little bit into the cons here, this is where, this was probably my least favorite portion of the movie is the whole... Uh, let's just say that like the Sahara portion. And I think my biggest problem with this portion is, you know, the, the Atlantean soldiers. The costume design in the, this portion of the movie, I thought was pretty lackluster. Uh, the, these look like costumes that you could pick out at Walmart for Halloween. And, uh, you know, that kind of take, took me out of the movie a little bit. Now, if I'm being honest, at this point in the movie, I had almost given up hope. I, you know, I, I thought if this keeps going this direction, you know, it feels like one of the, one of the bad parts of the Caribbean movies. Then I'm going to check out and I'm done with the DCEU. It was fun. But then something happened. Something amazing happened with this movie. And it's something that rarely happens in movies, actually. You know, where a movie is going one trajectory and then in the middle, it just completely changes course and gets completely badass. That's what this movie did. Kingdom of the Trench. James Wan, as we all know, is a horror director. Uh, in this section of the movie, I sat up, I literally sat up in my seat, my eyes got all big, I was, my, the horror fan in me was just uh, jumping for joy, and I was like, yes, here we go. This is a badass sequence, actually. You know, the Kingdom of the Trench is these, like, zombie-like fish creatures, and uh, you got Arthur and Mera, they're, they're on this boat, and they're attacked by literally, like, hundreds, thousands of creatures. And the lighting in that, that scene, the cinematography, uh, everything about it, was, it just screamed horror, and I loved it. And I thought this would be like a nice little horror homage that was kind of wedged in there. But no, from this point on, the movie just completely kicks ass all the way. After this, and we've seen in the trailer when Arthur comes out of the water and he's wearing the actual Aquaman costume, what follows after that scene is one of the most badass final acts of any comic book movie I think I've ever seen. I am serious, guys. You talk about world building, and even before this scene, all the scenes in Atlantis are just breathtaking. You're gonna get those like Avatar vibes from it, but uh, you know, you get to see a whole society down there and how they manage things, and uh, there's a lot going on. But then, once you get to the end, you really get to see how epic a battle scene can be underwater. And it was, it was breathtaking. 
I couldn't believe it. I, I left this movie thinking, wow, that was one of the best movies of the year. How did a movie that started off kind of, okay, this is interesting, and then went from that to, okay, this is pretty generic, and then from that, this is one of the best movies of the year. So I guess you got some, some pacing issues there with Aquaman, but um, I mean, overall, guys, this movie I thought was phenomenal. If it wasn't for that middle section, this would definitely get a trap on an island. But because of that, it's getting a super high purchase worthy, and I can't wait to add it to my collection. Uh, it, it sits firmly at number three for me uh, in the DCEU. And, uh, you know, it's one of the, gr I, I consider this a great movie. I really do. And I did not expect that with an Aquaman movie. I, I thought when I went into this that Aquaman was going to be like, you know, one of the worst, if I'm being honest. Because it really, the character <clears throat> did not prove himself to me in Justice League at all. You know, I thought he was one of the worst parts of Justice League. And to go from that to being one of the most interesting, fun, epic characters uh, of the bunch, you know. And I think the big thing, too, is this really showed for the first time how badass Aquaman is as a character. Because I know in the comics, uh, the guy is pretty damn powerful. You know, he controls the entire sea. You get to see that in this movie. That is the good news. Finally, we get to see Aquaman, and he is just as interesting as Batman. Just as interesting as what can be done with Superman. I thought they did it in Man of Steel. So anyway guys, post in the comments your thoughts on Aquaman. Looking forward to hearing them. Also stay tuned for my best of 2018. I did my best horror movies of 2018. Now I'm just gonna do overall best movies. So some of those horror titles are gonna be in there, of course, because I am the horror guy. And then, um, also, I'm going to do my worst list. Worst horror movies of the year and then worst movies in general because that's a different list. And also, today, I'm actually doing a Drum Dumb's Watches of Black Christmas, which is going to be a lot of fun. I haven't decided if it's going to be the original or the remake. Both have really interesting things to talk about. So I posted on Killer Flicks uh, and Instagram to see what you guys think. But anyway, guys, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day and on Fridays. We do for Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dumbs on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, and now Stardust. If you like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and Drum Dumb out.